Hello guys, another day, another conversation today. Uh, like now we hosted uh, Darek Kocienski from the Software House. Hi. So the Software House, like the only one and the most precious, of course. Of course, there are many Software Houses, but there is only one uh, Software House. <laughs> yeah, I love your name. Uh, today we are on the conference AIBA and we try to find the answer for the very simple question how to use, how to implement that new technology like AI in our businesses. And we try to escape from the bubble, like bubble people who are involved with that technology and they think like, okay, AI is something common. No, it's not. Uh, a lot of business owners hear about that, but they don't know how to start. And that's my first question. How to start uh, from your perspective? You should start with uh, educating yourself. So uh, I would encourage anybody who you know, wants to do a first steps into this space to basically uh, see what is out there, see what uh, other companies are doing, see what the competition is doing, maybe what are other what other industries implement that may be you know, similar in terms of uh, needs and patterns that can be implemented in a company and uh, basically try to you know, find uh, solutions that can bring uh, value to your business. There are many, many use cases uh, of AI. AI has been here for many years. The game has really changed this year. So 2023 uh, is a shift. So, Why? Uh, because you know, for, for many years I've been in this uh, AI business for more than five years. Uh, building AI was always costly mm -hmm. because uh, projects you know, large, uh, you have to build uh, models from scratch, you have to collect a lot of data. You have to make the data really good quality so that the models, uh, you know, bring good results. And then the implementation, all the all the effort. So cost and uh, on one hand, and then the second uh, uh, factor to consider was risk. So you know that uh, it was uh, very risky to, to to build because it's always R and D project. And uh, this year, uh, we've got Gen AI, we've got GPT, we've got Bard, we've got Llama. So these are the foundation models that are already created. So they significantly reduce uh, both the budget and the risk because uh, you can you know, basically take the solution and start playing with it. Building proof of concept is much quicker. You don't need lots of data to feed okay. to the model to train. So now uh, it gives you know, huge possibilities for companies to uh, you know, really test in their own environments whether solution work, solutions work. And uh, I've, you know, I've I was speaking with one client who wanted to implement the solution uh, and he thought that uh, GPT would solve his particular business problem. Mm -hmm. He started prompting the, the chat the problem that he had and he was already able to test himself on maybe you no know, early stage, but already you know, gave him a good sense whether he should pursue this uh, further. And now he's exploring possibility of building this like, you know, proper implementation. So you know, before that you will need to you know, spend maybe, you know, couple of months build the proof of concept. So maybe if we can uh, now switch from the general, very interesting facts for companies to the really like useful mm -hmm. use cases and that uh, how we can how we can use the gene AI in our businesses. Of course. So personally, I, uh, I feel uh, good in the space of uh, large language models. Okay. So uh, those use cases that basically understand text and uh, based on you know, this fact uh, provide value. And there are a number of different use cases where companies can uh, implement those solutions. Uh, one of the maybe more obvious is, for example, uh, you can take recordings, uh, transcripts of, of, of meetings, especially mm -hmm. sales meetings. Uh, sales is very important. Are you using that? Most of the companies. <laughs> there you go. And you can get insights uh, and you can uh, help salespeople be more efficient because they don't need to do boring tasks of you know typing the notes, improving them after the meeting. Okay, so make it simpler. Yes. For example, for sales team guys, you've got the sales team. Every single company have got some some sales apart departmental sales guy, or you like the owner or the sales guy. So now you can see in a very like obvious example that using the AI can help you be more effective. Because of? Because of Gen AI. <laughs> and also, you know, I mean, you, you don't have to just get the meaning, but you can also, for example, you can look at the most, uh, the best performance in the sales team and you can uh, okay. take insights of you know, what they do differently. 
uh, in their meetings that uh, works, and then you can pop, you know, pop, uh, make it popular among the, the rest of the cells. But you need to possess the data from the cells uh, people. Yes. Okay. So you need to prepare that process, for example, before you go to the implementation of the tool. Yes, but you don't just you know like roll it across the whole sales team. You okay. normally do a small pilot, you know, okay. with maybe a couple of salespeople. You see, you test how it works, and then if it's uh, bringing the, the the business results that you are hoping, then you roll it across okay. large organization. The other use case that is uh, super uh, interesting, uh, you know, companies uh, have tons of data. We've seen uh, you know data lakes being built. You know, analytics, big data uh, is growing. But one particular area where the things haven't progressed so well uh, before was uh, with text data. Imagine there are you know notes from meetings. There are you know engineers. They, they write notes about you know what problems they mm -hmm. encounter in factories. You've got operation people. Uh, you've got uh, procedures. You've got internal policies. So much text data that you couldn't actually tap into before. You know? So uh, keyword searches were cumbersome. So uh -huh. uh, it was not possible. And now with Gen AI, you can you know. Uh, relatively easily build uh, logic that helps get value out of this. So, for example, you've got this, uh, those people who repair machines in a factory and they write notes, mm -hmm. text notes about what was the problem, root cause, and uh, what may be the solution. And uh, you've got thousands of such people working across uh, the globe and yeah. now different languages. And now you can uh, you know, uh, summarize this information and you can create a chatbot with this knowledge so that, mm -hmm. you know, the, people can uh, query, like, for example, how to fix this problem, and you will get an answer okay. based on you know, past, uh, past activities. And it can be written in natural language, and uh, the model will still understand it. From your perspective, like a practice, what should be the first, first steps if you want to start? Like, where is the starting point? and what you, you should do next. And of course, assume that I don't have a million of dollars in my pocket, uh, but I just, I'm just curious. I, I know I'm aware of the impact of the AI and I need to start because I don't want to lose the opportunity and don't, don't want to lose that train, you know? Of so course. What, what, how to start? So I, I would suggest from making you know, a list of potential uh, use cases that, that are applicable to your company. So all your different ways that you think uh, and people in your team think that AI can help, uh, just basically list them you know, one after the other and then assess them. Uh, okay. Because uh, you know you may be lucky to have this $1 million to, to spend on the project. I would still discourage you from doing so. So I would encourage you to uh, basically find, find low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. So the ki kind of project that can be a, a good way to start. So you don't want to start with something big, something very risky. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to start with something relatively small and easy, but that can already prove that there is value. Okay. Because like with innovation, you know, you need to you know show good results to get more uh, support from you know from other people in the company. I always uh, encourage to look at four uh, core uh, criteria when you assess those uh, use cases. So one is obviously the, the, the financial gain that you can achieve so maybe it will reduce need for people in the company mm -hmm. and it will provide um, reasonable uh, savings or you know increase sales in, in your company and you have to assess it it doesn't sound very sophisticated okay but i see that a lot of companies don't assess uh, what kind of uh, business outcome they expect mm -hmm. and uh, it's good especially when you compare different use cases to each other to get even general idea of uh, how much money it can bring to the company. Your company, the software house, you are working with a lot of clients who are really starting that, that, that process. Mm -hmm. Where is the, the biggest uh, challenge from your perspective, like a company who need to like persuade maybe uh, the, the team on the client side that, hey guys, that's going to be some changes. How you do that? How you achieve that goal? As I was saying, that there are a couple of different uh, criteria. Like, you know, gain is one of them. The cost uh, is the other. Uh, the technical you know, technology and, uh, and market is the other. Uh, that is the third one. But then I think that the secret ingredient for successful uh, AI implementation is the ingredient which I call the support okay. from within the company. To be honest, I would not focus on those projects that where I need to convince people okay. and really, you know, like educate them. Like, hey, this is really has value, and they question like, does it have value? I would really try to find those projects where people already believe in it and start 
working with, you know, in their area. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so early adopters, people who think positive about uh, Gen AI uh, and AI in general and uh, want to uh, experiment. Because you, know, you might have this fantastic use case, like millions of uh, uh, dollars to, to bring to the company. But if you have people who are against it, who you, know, you will need their yeah, support, yeah. It might set you for failure at the beginning, and then, you know, the, okay. the first failure is going to be hard to to do more success in the future. So it's from my own experience, uh, seeing many uh, such projects going on, it's better to start with those projects that have uh, support. That and it's not only support from you know, business people and executives, but also support from users, mm -hmm. because you know, if if you have a tool that uh, is supposed to replace people, uh, they will, you know. And users will not be happy to uh, for such implementation. Mm -hmm. But if there is a tool that is uh, supposed to maybe remove boring tasks that they do okay. and make them you know, more happy, then yeah. they will be uh, more engaged in the project. Are there any misconcepts uh, about uh, Gen AI that you would like to address and clarify? There is one fear uh, among many companies about privacy of their own data. So they are afraid that if uh, they build a solution based on Gen AI uh, and they feed uh, the, the data into the model, that this data will go public to other companies. Uh -huh. uh, we've heard uh, such cases happening. You can build a solution that uh, removes this risk. So, for example, OpenAI, that they let you, you know, have your own sandbox where mm -hmm. your data is stored and it doesn't go uh, out to the general model. And if you don't trust OpenAI as a, as a you know, still relatively young company, you can also rely on larger companies like uh, Amazon with their AWS Bedrock or uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure. You can host all your data in their environment so it doesn't go uh, to OpenAI. Uh, it doesn't leave uh, the ecosystem where you already have your precious data from, from other projects. Mm -hmm. Your speech and what we are talking uh, about today is how you can use that AI tools today. But what about tomorrow? Change it so fast that I don't want to predict something after you know, five or ten years, but maybe next one, two years. What do you think? What's your expectation of that technology? What will change? AI will be building AI. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, InPost uh, was uh, at a conference uh, lately where they were sharing uh, insights from their project where they used a couple of different uh, AI models working at the same time and testing each other. Okay. To, and uh, they managed to do it in this way that they uh, improved efficiency of the model to 99% because of, uh, instead of mm -hmm. you know, people testing the model, the mod other model was testing the first model. <laughs> Great, that sounds very interesting. Uh, so where is the, uh, the space for the people there, for the testers, for example? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that this will also change because the testing role, yeah. uh, it may be even more automatic, so it will be even less manual work. I mean, we've, we, we had automated testing for many years where you create uh, automatic uh, test, test plans that are executed uh, by software yeah. rather than human. But you still need that uh, this person to create those tests, and uh, now maybe the tester will in the future the tester maybe will just or orchestrate the whole task and set the goals, okay. and the, the model will create those tests and then perform them. So yeah, it took our jobs. It took our jobs. <laughs> now I would not be worried about this uh, because there's going to be so many new opportunities to to work uh, in this space. And uh, I, I mean, at, at the end, there is you know, the business goals of the companies and the needs of everyday people. And uh, you know, companies still need to make profit. People still want to you know, have solutions that improve their life. So uh, if uh, some things become easier, less manual, organic intelligence <laughs> work dependent, I think that we'll find ways to uh, use talent to do even better things in the future. I wish you that. But I'm op optimistic, so you know, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay, we'll see. So thank you for the conversation. Thank you for having you here. Uh, thank you guys for, for listening. Uh, and see you on the conference. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs>